Stranger Things Season 4 Volume 1 came out yesterday. And these are my honest thoughts on Stranger Things Season 4. Let's start off with Episode 1. The first few minutes show us a man doing a word puzzle. Until we see that that man is no other than Dr. Brenner. Now keep in mind, this is past 1979. If you watch a few more minutes, it shows us basically what Eleven did to the other you know, test subjects and workers or scientists, I should say. Now I assume she escaped after that scene. Now that we are in the present, it's been 185 days since Eleven moved from Hawkins to, well, Lenora High School. At this point in episode 1, we are getting reintroduced to the characters and what they have been well, doing. Will has been painting, now we don't know who the painting is for or what it is. Jonathan looks like a hippie basically and we see that he's smoking weed. I assume and of course we see the first you know, new character in the series, Argyle. We can see that Eleven is getting bullied at her new you know, school, Lenora. By a group of teenagers, Mike and Nancy are getting ready to leave for school, I would presume. Dustin and Susie are hacking the school's system, you know, the, you know to change uh, Dustin's grades. Steve and Robin are also on their way to school. A little side note, they both work at a local video store. Sadie and Lucas, well, Sadie we can see that she's supposed to see a therapist at school. But missed it and Lucas, well, we said he is playing basketball. Fast forward, Joyce gets a package from Russia, from Hopper. And we get another new character named Angel. That Joyce calls Murray to discuss what the doll was. He tells her to break it, she does, to see if something, yeah, of course, is inside. To which she does, she finds the letter from Hopper. Enzo wants $40,000 and Hopper will be, you know, well, set free. First encounter of the monster. Chrissy is crying and thrown up in the bathroom, which she starts hearing her mom call her name when we see the monster's feet under a bathroom stall. And here we can have a theory that the monster uses his victim's past to lure them in or, well, to scare them. Getting to another new character, Eddie, who is pretty much in charge of Hellfire Club. Let's skip to the end of the first episode where we see the true horror we hear from the interviews. We see Chrissy being killed, not in a normal way, but her arms and legs and jaw were, well, basically snapped, which looked like, well, ragdoll physics. The worst part were her eyes being pressed in or sucked into her skull. Truly horrifying to see. Episode 2 starts off showing us how Hopper survived. Many people thought he jumped inside the portal, but he fell under the portal and under the blast, surviving. He climbs up and gets captured by the Russians. Police arrive at the scene where Chrissy died, interrogating Eddie's uncle, Wayne. Sadie goes over to see what happened and she sees a dead body on the ground. Mike arrives at the airport where Eleven and Will are waiting. Sadie goes to Dustin to tell him what she knows about what happened last night. Dustin starts to worry about Eddie and they both leave to, s no, to look for him. Dustin and Sadie arrive at the store where Steve and Robin work, looking to find any clues to where Eddie might be. Nancy and her partner investigate the murder, hoping to find out what happened and of course get a story for the paper. Now at the arcade we can see more of Eleven being bullied by, but this time Mike is there to see all of it. Jason and Murray call the number they found inside the doll, and Enzo answers giving them all the details to get Hopper out of Russia, well, prison I would say. Robin goes through the store's database to find where Eddie is hiding. They find the address to where he's hiding and sets off to go find him. Nancy interviews Wayne Hudson, uncle of Eddie, to where Wayne talks about a guy called Victor Creel, to which he thinks well, killed Chrissy. While Nancy talks to Wayne, we see that Glasses guy becomes the next victim. Mike finds out Eleven lied to him about what's been going on with her to which we see Eleven hit a girl in the face with rollerblades, causing a type 2 concussion. While the gang looks for Eddie, they find him at the back of the shed of the property of the property, sorry. Scared shitless to which he explains what he saw and the gang realizes that the monsters are back. Now at the end of episode 2 we see Glasses Guy getting killed the same way like Chrissy got killed. Now I don't know what the Glasses Guy's name is called, I'm sorry. Episode 3 starts with Sam and his wife being woken up by the military in a helicopter. They ask what Sam thinks of the murders and what he thinks happened. The military, su the military suspects that Eleven is the cause behind the murders. 
Going a little faster, we see our first glimpse of the upside down in the season, I believe. The basketball team sets off on a manhunt for Eddie. The police arrive at the buyer's house looking for Eleven, to which they arrest her for what she did. Joyce and Murray are on their way to Russia, not knowing what's about to happen. Hopper and Enzo talk about the escape plan for how, how Hopper will get out. Another Russian's name is not Enzo, I'll keep calling him that to make it easier to know who I'm talking about. The gang goes to the school therapist house looking for a connection between Chrissy and you know, Glasses Boy. To which they find nothing, to which they have to break into school and find the personal files for Chrissy and the Glasses Guy. The basketball team are now looking for Dustin because they know that Dustin knows where Eddie is. The police van, taking Levin to juvenile detention, gets stopped by Sam's police, the scientists, I guess. Sam and Levin have a chat, and he says that he can help Eleven get her powers back, but she have she'd have to go with him, which it could take weeks or months to get her powers back. But she decides to go with him to become a superhero again. Now, super, you know, uh, episode three ends off with Mac seen the clock which means she could be the next victim victim of Vecna. Ep episode 4 starts off with the government explaining the situation of Eleven to Mike, Will and Jonathan which they don't take seriously. Max, Max explains to the gang that she has the same sim symptoms of Chrissy and Glasgow. Still don't know his name. Max writes goodbye, you know, goodbye letters to everyone and luckily Lucas has been you know, filled in with what's been happening. Mike, Will and Jonathan want to escape the house, yet they're gonna need to get past the guards. Nancy and Robin visit the asylum to meet and talk to Victor to try and find out how he survived Vecna. Joyce and Murray meet with Yuri to start the deal to save Hopper. Hopper manages to escape the prison and is on the run. Mike and them get attacked by the military, killing the two guards and they're also on the run, but luckily before one guard did die, he told them to call Nina. Now Yuri betrays everyone for a better deal and has captured Joyce and Murray. And Hop Hopper got captured again. <laughs> we got to learn and see Victor Creel's past and what happened to his family, which is very important by the way. You'll see Max visit uh, Billy's, uh, Billy's grave to read him her goodbye letter. And then suddenly Vecna has started to act upon Max. While Steve, Lucas and Dustin try to get her out, they call Nancy to see if they have a cure for the problem. To which luckily they found one thing. Music to which they played Max's favorite song which got her out of danger for now. Episode 5, Eleven and Sam arrive at the top secret facility to get her powers back. And we get to see a huge surprise waiting. Dr. Brenner himself is alive. Joyce and Murray make a plan to get out of handcuffs and get Yuri to go back to Hopper. To which they do get Yuri as their prisoner, but they crash in the middle of nowhere. Max draws what she saw in the Upside Down, which Nancy notices that it looks familiar. She puts a puzzle into place and they found out that it's Victor Creel's house. Eleven starts her treatments to get her powers back. The only way to do that is to go through her memories. The, gov the government arrives at Dwayne's house and finds one of the portals created when Vecna killed Chrissy. The basketball team is after the Hellfire Club now because they believe they're a cult. The gang arrives at Victor Creel's house to look for clues while Mike and them go to Salt Lake City to find Susie to help them find out where Nina is, given it's going to be a bit more difficult to do so. The basketball team arrives at where Eddie is hiding Jason chases after Eddie in the water and Patrick follows to which Vecna makes his move and kills Patrick the same way as the rest. Eleven gets a glimpse of her powers. Unfortunately, it hasn't come back fully, kind of a one-time thing, you know. Episode 6. Police r arrive at a crime scene where Patrick died, questioning Jason on what happened to which he believes Eddie is a Satan spawn, or a spawn of Satan, I guess. Wallace gets inter uh, interrogated by the military to try and find out where Eleven is. Ele Eleven still continues to try and remember how to get her powers back. The gang arrive back at where Eddie is staying, seeing the cops. Luckily, Eddie calls them and tells them where he is hiding. Mike and them arrive at Susie's house, to which I said earlier, they need her help to find out where Nina is. Joyce and Murray interrogate Yuri to find out where the prison is, where Hopper is being held. 
captive. Hopper and the other prisoners feast to which they think nothing of it, but Hopper knows that they're going to be fed to the Demogorgon. Hopper explains what he knows about the Demogorgon to the other prisoners. Now we see more of Eleven's memories, which I'm not going to talk about you know, much about them each time. The gang is on their way to Eddie. Jason confronts the community to aid in their help to find the Hellfire Club, to which most of them agreed, so now most of the people are looking for them. Dustin realizes that the compass was completely wrong to where we start looking for the portal because the compass moves st uh, towards a stronger electromagnetic field. Eleven and the rest of the test subjects face off against each other to find out who is stronger to which Eleven wins. Joyce and Murray come up with a plan to get into a prison u using Yuri as a prisoner. Murray disguises as Yuri. The gang arrive at Lover's Lake, which is where the main portal is at. Steve Robin, Eddie and Nancy head into the water to find it and Steve dives into the water to find it which he gets pulled through the portal while Eddie, Robin and Nancy go after him through the portal while Max, Dustin and Lucas got caught by the police. Now Eleven finally remembers or realizes what she did to the other test subjects. Steve and the rest fight off these weird bat looking monsters. Mr. Wallace finally breaks and tells the military where Eleven is. Meanwhile, Eleven goes through her final test to get her powers back. Police question Dustin and the rest on why they were at Lover's Lake. Joyce and Murrah arrive at the prison. Lucas explains the situation to his sister Erica, which of course she doesn't believe him. Nancy and the rest went to her house in the Upside Down, looking for her guns. I'm only real realizing that the Upside Down is the past. Looking at the diary, the last entry was 1983, the day that Will went missing. The first time, well. Nancy and Riz can hear Dustin somehow, to which they try and contact him using the lights. Hopper and the rest of the prisoners get ready to face off against the Demogorgon. While Joyce and Murray see him, Nancy contacts Dustin, to which Dustin exp you know, explains where another portal can be at Eddie's trailer. The Demogorgon attacks while Joyce and Murray try to get the doors open. The Demogorgon kills every single prisoner except for Hopper and Enzo. Finally, they get to see the doors open. Hopper and Enzo are alive. We get to see the reunion of Hopper and Joyce finally. Steve and the rest find a portal to go back home. Everyone goes through, except when Nancy tries to go through, she lands in the mind of Vecna. Now, pay, now pay attention, this is extremely important. Eleven finds out that Mr. Nice Guy was indeed number one, which he's the one that killed everyone, not Eleven. Looking at Vecna's memories now, we find out that Vector, Creel's son, was indeed number one. Which Victor Creel's son killed his mother and sister and that Vecna is number one. Which we see Eleven open a portal to well the upside down. Which number one transforms into Vecna. While this was happening inside Eleven's memories we can assume she got her powers back with the lights flickering and all of that. And that's how Stranger Things Season 4 Volume 1 ended. Only about a month or so before we get Volume 2 and then we can see how all of this ends. If you did enjoy this video, then please subscribe. We are so close to 20 subscribers. Is this who I am? There's nowhere to go but up on a pedestal.